so problem statement is we are given an integer array a with unique elements that is each element exists only once of size n we need to check that whether there exists an element which is greater than all the elements on left of it and smaller than all the elements on right of it so as the name suggests we need to find the peak of the array such that uh, all the elements on its left are uh, smaller than it that is it is greater than all the elements to its left and it is smaller than all the elements to its right okay so if it exists we need to return one else we need to return zero so here we just need to confirm whether any such element is present or not there is no need to return that element or anything such and we need to note down that uh, we we are not have to consider the corner cases the corner elements which are a of 0 and a of n minus 1 because uh, the left of a of 0 is not defined and the right of a of n plus n minus 1 is also not defined hence we are, we need to consider the valid answers between a of 1 and a of n minus 2 okay so let's understand with the help of an example so example 1 is we are given an array 5 1 4 3 6 8 10 7 9 so output is 1 1 refers to that there is at least one such element so let's see uh, the explanation is a of 4 equals to 6 so this is a of 4 which is 6 let's consider all the elements to the left of it which are 5 1 4 3 or as you can see all the elements on the left of 6 are smaller than 6 again let's check to the right of it 8 10 7 9 so as you can see all the elements to the right of it are greater than it so by this we can confirm that this is at its perfect place okay why so because all the elements of left of 6 are smaller than it and all the elements to the right of it are greater than it so this is the peak element that we had to find fine now consider example 2 5 1 4 3 so let's uh, check only two possible answers because we need to ignore the corner cases so let's check left of 1 which is 5 it is not smaller than it so 1 cannot be answered let's check 4 4 has again 5 comma 1 to its left and 5 is greater than it so again 4 cannot be the answer so there is no possible answer hence we return 0 in this case okay so we hope that the problem statement is clear here why we returned 1 because there is one element 6 uh, uh, where the left all the left elements to it are smaller than it and all the elements to right of it are greater than it so approach 1 would be the brute force approach what is brute force approach let's do what is required let's loop through each of the elements from index 1 to index n minus 2 and keep checking to the left of it and keep checking to the right of it so what it states pick each element from index 1 to n minus 2 that is loop through all the possible answers check if all the elements to its left are smaller than it or not check all the elements to the right of it are greater than or, or greater than it or not if both the conditions are satisfied then return 1 if no such element found return 0 so what we need to do we need to pick any element one let's check to the left of it it is five so it cannot be the answer let's check four the element five so it cannot be the answer let's check three again four which is left of it and greater than so it cannot be the answer let's check six so we will check all the elements to left of it so we check that all are smaller so it can be answer so let's check right of it we check all the elements to right of it they are also greater than it so yes both the conditions satisfied and 6 is the answer so this is the brute force approach where we pick all the elements one at a time and check all the elements to its left and all the elements to its right so as you can see it is order of n square complexity now let's check a solution which is more efficient than this so approach 2 is create two arrays mx and mn each of size m n so here i'll understand uh, help you understand why we need two arrays so suppose uh, let's build a logic here so suppose we need to find an element which is at its perfect place that means the peak element because all the elements to its left are smaller than it so it is at its correct place okay so how to understand it so it is at its correct place okay so how to understand this uh, let's make array, array mx which is mx of i stores the so why why this range is required suppose we store mx of i as the greatest element found from start till this index so then we can confirm that the greatest element found so far is mx of i at uh, position i so what would be the mx of 4 year mx of 4 year would be 6 why so because still 
index 4 the greatest element found is 6 okay and mx of uh, 3 would be 5 why because at till index 0 uh, from index 0 to 4 or 0 to 3 index the greatest element found is 5 so we will store 5 here okay now similarly mn of i stores the smallest element within the range a of n minus 1 to a of i so we check this range from right end till the correct index so suppose mn of 4 what would be mn of 4 mn of 4 would be 6 what is 6 the smallest element found from the last index till the current index so as you can see this is the range 6 8 10 7 9 what is the smallest element 6 so m of 4 stores 6 so one logic to see here is mx of 4 would be 6 mn of 4 would be 6 why so because mx stores the maximum element found so far from the left end which would be 6 for this element and mn of i stores the right stores the minimum element found from the right end which would be 6 again so as you can see if all the elements mn of i mx of i and a of i all three are equal then that is the required element so what what's the logic here if all the elements to the left of it uh, we find the greatest element so far it should be the smallest element from the right it should be the greatest element from the left and it should be a of i itself then only we can say element exist so to find if any such elements exist or not loop from 1 to n minus 2 why from 1 to n minus 2 because we are told that 0 and n minus 1 cannot be the answer because the left and the right bound for them are not defined so if for any index mx of i mn of i and a of i are all equal then this is the required element hence return 1 let's again understand why all three would be equal so as you can see 6 is the answer here why 6 is answer because it is greater than all the elements to its left so mx of i stores this for us mx of i stores which is the greatest element from the left end to that current index so this is fourth index so what would be mx of 4 it would be 6 mx of 0 mx of 1 mx of 2 mx of 3 mx of 4 so mx of 4 would be 6 why because 6 is the greatest element from 0th index to 4th index and what would be mn of 4 mn of 4 would be 6 again why because mn of i stores the smallest element from right end to the correct index so if you can see 4 5 6 7 8 all these indices the smallest index from year to year would be uh, the smallest element would be 6 so mn of 4 would also store 6 what would be mn of uh, 6 what would be mn of 6 this index mn of 6 would be 7 why because within this range the smallest element form found is 7 so it will store uh, 7 what would be mn of 7 mn of 7 would be 7 itself because it is the minimum element and so on okay so let's come to the coding section in order to understand it better and we will refer to this approach for coding so let's take a sample input in order to check our answer so let me define vector in a equals to input as the sample case 5 okay, let's just copy paste it okay now let's define our own method to check uh, to write this particular piece of code uh, peak element let's just define find peak and let's pass this vector okay uh, so int answer equals to find pick let's print out the answers see out answer no line okay so let's uh, write as you can see it is we are collecting it in int so let's define the return type as int int find peak what will this return this will return either 1 or 0 1 if such elements exist 0 if no such element exists okay so let's first find the number of elements okay also we need to take the parameter as vector so vector of int let's take it as a okay so how to find the number of elements in a vector just a dot size it will give us the number of elements present in a now what we need to do what's the second step create two arrays mx and mn each of size n why n because there are n elements so we need to store the mx of i for each of these indices okay so let's define int 
mx of n so mx stands for max till n and mn stands for min till n okay now one more concept mx of 0 what would be mx of 0 just pause it for a second and think and then resume the video so mx of 0 would be a of 0 itself why so because the maximum element from 0th index to 0th index would be the element itself similarly think for a minute about M mn of n minus 1 and then resume the video okay so mn of n minus 1 would be a of n minus 1 itself why because the minimum element from last element to the last element would be the last element itself okay now let's do this for the remaining elements uh, let's take two variable mxx to store the maximum element so far and mnn equals to a of n n n minus 1 so this is just initialization that you will understand when we write the remaining code so let's loop from int i equals to 1 i is less than uh, we need to write okay i plus plus okay so we uh, we set the max array here mxx equals to max of mxx comma a of i okay so what mxx stores it stores the maximum element found so far from all the previous indices to the a of i indices and what where do we need to store this we need to store this in mx of i so mx of i equals to mxx by this by doing this we are forming the mx which is the max of i array now let's write similar logic for the mn array as we need to find all the elements so as you can see mn is to be found found from the right end to the current index so let's root from the opposite direction so for int i equals to n minus 2 as we are moving towards left so a uh, loop will be defined this way and i minus minus why because each time we are moving left we need to decrement the index by 1 and let's uh, as we did for the max let's do the same for min mnn comma a of i okay so what is this doing this is storing the minimum element found so far from the right end to the current index and let's store this particular value in mn of i as discussed while discussing the approach so mn of i equals to mnn okay and finally we have formed these two arrays now to find if any such element exists or not loop from index 1 to n minus 2 okay so let's loop from int i equals to 1 i is less than n minus 1 i plus plus okay and when can we say that we have found such an answer when all three mx of i mn of i and a of i are equal so as discussed here 6 is the required answer why so because all the elements to its left are smaller than it all the elements to its right are greater than it so then only mx of 4 mn of 4 and a of 4 would all be same element logically speaking you can just pause this video for a minute and think again and you will understand this logic okay so how to do that if a of i equals to equals to mn of i and then mn of i equals to equals to mx of i okay so basically all three are equal we can also write and a of i equals to so a of i is mn of i and a of i is mx of i so basically all three are equal then we need to return my one because one such element exists which would be a of i itself okay we can also return that particular element which would be six here okay so uh, rather than returning one let's return that element itself for better understanding else just return zero by default because if no such element exists this loop will this loop will uh, be completed and we will exit this by returning zero okay and we are printing answer here so let's see what happens let's run this code so first we are compiling this code okay compile successfully let's run this okay answer is 6 
so as you can see our code is running fine so let's check for second example and then we can conclude that it is running fine 5143 5143 okay for this the answer should be 0 let's check again compile because we have made changes to the code and run it 0 correct why 0 because there is no such element uh, which is following the given condition again just spend some more time understanding this code making such arrays mn and mx are very crucial and very uh, efficient while solving such problems involving range so you would understand uh, why there is a need to form such arrays okay so hope you have understood it very well thanks for watching